morning, Central Church, wherever you are. If you are in person here, it's, de it's delightful to see you. Speaking as one who's come out of quarantine yesterday, it's delightful to see people. I am so glad to be here and with you in this time of worship together. If you are joining us on our live stream or also on our TV service, um, we are delighted to have you um, all together, though apart, for worship today. I want to thank, just for a moment, take a moment to thank um, everyone who made it possible for me to be um, with my father for the last two weeks and, er, and then quarantine for the last two weeks. So we have an abundance of blessings here at Central in retired pastors, in seminary graduates, in trained lay speakers. And so I am so thankful for Horace for, for doing communion at the 830 service. Um, for Laurel and Ben and Joe Friga, who preached. And I, I just can't tell you how much easier it was for me to, to do what I needed to do, um, knowing that folks had it. They had it. And so I am grateful to all of you for, for doing that while I was away. If you are here in person this morning, um, there is a, a friendship pad somewhere near you. If you will sign in with your name and contact information and then tear out that sheet and leave it on top of the friendship pad so we can collect them later without having to go through all of them, that would be great. Um, we need that for contact tracing. And we will ask you to keep your masks on the entire time of worship while you're here. We are in um, our live stream format and we're still taking every possible precaution to keep people safe. We're still six feet apart up here. <clears throat> and except for us up here, people are wearing masks. Marie King is here with me to lead worship with me. Um, Amber Gaylord was scheduled to read scripture. You'll see in the bulletins if you're in person. Carl Northrup will be reading instead. Thank you, Carl. Um, Sean and Suzette are providing music. Suzette Marino, Sean Stafford are providing music this morning, offering their gifts, their great talents and gifts this morning. And that incredible tech team back there is making all of this happen live and live stream. So we've got Knud and Nate and Alex and Mark back there this morning. Maggie and Tyler Wolford are moderating comments on the live stream chat. And if you want to join that chat stream, you need to be logged in to YouTube through your own account to watch the service, and then you can participate in the chat as well. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in that chat. So um, I invite you to do that if you like. So we are here to worship together. Together is a very loose word these days. We are the church, not confined to this building or any building, but deployed into a hundred or so or more house churches. Imagine that. Until we can all be present together again, we lift our prayers and our worship from wherever we are. Marie, will you lead us in prayer to begin? Your word, O oh God, is a feast all its own. Your word heals and reconciles all peoples. Holy God, you set before us each day a bounty of good things. Too often we miss the blessings or deny the gifts. We deny the desire of our hearts for you. Bring us to your presence, hungry for your word, eager to rebuild the broken places in our world and ready to receive all persons so that we celebrate at all times and in all places the peace which is life in you. Teach us to build each other up. Teach us to be your church together. May we, your church, preach the gospel, not only in words, but in all that we do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Jesus. Beautiful. And now for a children's time, we have a video this morning from Sarah Maroney. Good morning, friends. I don't know about you, but I am seeing pumpkins everywhere. Fall is finally here, and that means Halloween is on its way. One of my favorite things to do is decorate and carve pumpkins with my family. First, we decide if we want them to be silly or scary faces, and then we get to cut off the top and scoop the seeds out. We do this so that when we're finished carving our jack-o'-lantern face, we can put a light inside and let it shine. Today, I'm gonna to teach you all a pumpkin prayer. You can do this with your families as you carve pumpkins, or you can make a little paper jack-o'-lantern like this. As you carve the top opening of the pumpkin, say, we will open our minds so we can receive God's message. And then clear out all the innards and say, we will clear our thoughts of any mean thoughts and prejudices. Next, we're gonna carve the eyes. And we're gonna say, we will open our eyes so that we can see all the good in God's world. 
Next, you're going to carve the notes and you're going to say, we will awaken all of our senses so we can be aware of all the goodness around us. Next is the mouth. Carve the mouth and say, we will share God's message with our friends and family. Next, we're gonna put a light inside. And we're gonna say, we will let our light shine for all to see. Amen. If you know the song, This Little Light of Mine, sing it loud and proud. We're gonna be learning that song a little later in the program. And if you don't know it, just join us in Kids Space. On Friday, October 30th, we're going to have our first annual Great Pumpkin Giveaway and Trunk or Treat from 4 to 6.30 p.m. We'll have a free socially distanced Trunk or Treat right here in our parking lot, and every kid that comes will get their own pumpkin to decorate. There will even be a takeout hot dog dinner for your family to enjoy at home afterwards. Reservations and masks will be required, so be sure to call the church office at 607-754-6060. And if you haven't done it yet, text KIDSPACE to 607-600-2754 to connect your family with Laurel and I and receive updates about our faith formation program. I hope everybody has a beautiful week. Good morning. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. This is a letter written by Paul, the apostle, who was very well traveled to the church at Philippi. Hear these words. My dear, dear friends, I love you so much. I do want the very best for you. You make me feel such joy. Fill me with such pride. Don't waver. Stay on track, steady in God. I urge Euodia and Syntec to iron out their differences and make up. God doesn't want his children holding grudges. And, oh yes, Sizgus, since you were right there to help them work things out, do your best with them. These women work for the message hand in hand with Clement and me and with other veterans worked as hard as any of us. Remember their names are also in the book of life. Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help me see that the master is about to arrive. He could show up at any minute. Don't fret or worry, instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Summing it up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, and the best, not the worst. The beautiful, not the ugly. Things to praise, not things to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God who makes everything work together will work you into his most excellent harmonies. May the Lord, Lord has his blessing to our reading. Well, I would say that most people come to worship each week, however they come to worship, whether they are here in person or watching on the live stream or watching on TV, however they come to worship, they come wanting something for themselves. I'd say that's mostly true most of the time. Some, <clears throat> excuse me, some want comfort or hope or healing. Some want to listen to music. Some want to hear the organ. Some want to hear music from a band with drums. Some want to hear a word that will help them process the week prior or 
make it through the week to come. Some come to worship because they want to see their friends or enjoy the one time each week when they can talk to someone outside their family. Some just want some peace and sacred time for an hour. Some want to feel powerful and run the show. Some want to find God. Some want to find out if God is even real. Some only come to worship because a family member pressured them to. Some want to find a way to help heal the world. Some come because they don't know how to pray anywhere else. Some come because they want their kids or their grandkids to grow up with values. Some come because it's a habit they just can't shake. Some because they've got an argument with God they need to settle. Some because they're paid to be here. Now notice that's a very, very long list. And it's not all-inclusive. And notice also that you probably found yourself somewhere in there. So take another step and notice this too. The person sitting next to you, closest to you on your left-hand side, and that may be in your house next door, I don't know, probably could find themselves in this list somewhere else than you did. And the person sitting closest to you on your right-hand side probably found themselves yet somewhere else in that list. And maybe the thing that resonated with you this morning, or today as you're watching this, as your reason for being in worship today, is not the same as your reason for being in worship six weeks ago, or six months ago, or six years ago, or 60 years ago, as the case may be. We're none of us here for the same reason, which means none of us None of us gets the same thing out of this church worship experience every single week. And the truth of the matter is, none of us should. I can't tell you how many times in all my years of ministry, someone has said to me something like, I hated that first hymn you picked today. Or, I hated the drums. Or, I hated the organ." Or, I'm mad that you made your sermon political. Or, I'm mad that you didn't go far enough talking about politics in your sermon. Or, I'm upset that you were talking about me. I wasn't. (laughs) Or, I'm upset that you were talking about someone else. I wasn't. Or, I'm not feeling fed. You're not feeding me spiritually, so I am leaving church. One or more of those things, every single one of those things I've experienced someone saying to me, More times than I can count. Horace is out here nodding his head. Retired pastor. How many years in churches? 55? 45? 40. I didn't know what that was. That looked like, okay. Yeah. 40 years in churches. You heard it too, right? The thing is, this church program, this worship experience, this church experiment, This whole experience of being the community of faith is a group enterprise. We're here for different reasons. Sometimes different reasons each week. As we come through various times and events in our lives, of course it's not going to be all for us all the time, every time we're here. It can't be. And that's, I think, one of the hardest things to learn about church especially in our consumer-driven culture that says you should get what you want when you want it, and shipping should be free. Customer satisfaction guaranteed. Each and every customer is always right all the time. Well, church is different, or it should be. Church is a place and a time for each one who walks through these doors or turns on the live stream or turns on the TV on a Sunday morning or any time they happen to be watching it, that time, that experience, should be a place to encounter the presence of the holy. That holy presence might not be speaking directly to them that week, but I promise that God is speaking to somebody that week. 
How do we handle it when it's not all about us all the time? Well, some get mad. Some get frustrated. Some rejoice. Paul gives some direction about this to the church in Philippi in this letter. He's writing them from prison. Not an ideal situation, but he is writing them, telling them to rejoice in all things, to rejoice continuously. And again, I say rejoice. That's where that song comes from. How do you respond to a guy in prison who says to rejoice in all situations? How do you, how do you say no <laughs> to someone who's clearly in the worst situation he can be and rejoicing anyway? So what he says is worth listening to. And what he says is this, essentially, get along with one another. Build each other up. We are all in the Lord's circle. We are all in God's kingdom. We are all God's people, even when it seems like our worries are too big or our differences are too wide or we can't get along with those we're supposed to get along with. That's the first part of that letter. He's talking to Iodia and Syntyche about getting along. They seem to be having a little tiff about something in the church. I don't know. Does that ever happen between two people in the same church? <laughs> Enough said. Even when we can't get along with those we're supposed to get along with, we're still all recipients of God's grace and recipients of God's power that brings together everything for good, even if we don't feel like that's happening for us in any particular week or day or month. The question becomes, especially in church, can we step back enough we step back enough from our own immediate needs to see a bigger picture. This is what Paul's asking this church to do. Can we step back enough from our own demands and our own worries and our own stresses and our own desires to do like Paul says and reflect on everything that is true and noble and reputable and authentic and compelling and gracious? And not just what is true and noble and reputable and authentic and compelling and gracious for us. That's a harder task. That puts all of us in a different position in this whole church enterprise. It shifts us from the role of being consumers to being hosts. Think about that for a minute. When we are consumers of faith or consumers of church, we really are in it just for what it can do for me. What's in this for me? What can I get out of this? When we become hosts, we become co-laborers in this work of faith. We become responsible, like good hosts are, for welcoming everyone, especially for welcoming God's presence. We become responsible, like good hosts are, for seeing that everyone gets at least something they need. We become responsible, like good hosts are, we're sometimes melting into the background so someone else can be fed, knowing that our turn will come later. And when we do it right, when we get it right, there's somebody usually doing the same thing for us. So what if each of us came into this church enterprise feeling like a host? What would that change? about the way we greet each other? What would that change about the way we listen and participate in the worship of God together? What would that change about the way we make the programs and ministries of the church happen? What would that change in the way we do church and the way we are church? Could we, could we experience worship through the lens of hoping first and foremost that someone else gets spiritually fed? Could we come to church or to this worship experience and praying with all our hearts that somebody will find what they need that day, even if it's not us? Could we experience worship or anything else we do here actively looking for whatever is happening that is true and noble and reputable and authentic and compelling and gracious and praying for someone else to find those things, even if we don't that particular day? That's a huge shift, and that can be a very uncomfortable 
shift when we're not accustomed to thinking that way. But that's what call, Paul called his church to be and to do. To put differences aside, to remember that we're all in this work together, to rejoice whenever someone finds what they need or is reunited with God or grows in their faith. faith. To rejoice in all things at all times, even when they're not happening in that moment to us. That's a big shift. But as you can see, it's biblical. <laughs> so in the coming month or so, we're all going to get an opportunity to shift that thinking about how to be church and how to be part of church and how to be part of this enterprise we'll all get an opportunity to decide how we'll be part of the work of the body of Christ in this place and time. You'll get an opportunity to reflect on all that we do here at Central and how you might be a host for these ministries and programs and work areas. We'll be matching people with their gifts and talents and wishes with service opportunities for the year ahead. And we'll also begin to look at funding our ministries for the coming year. And so I'm going to invite everyone, in person or watching in some way, to think about these things from the mind and heart set of hosting instead of being customers or consumers. Instead, think about this. Or as Paul might say, think on these things. Where do you feel God calling you to host someone else's experience of faith and church? Central might have the perfect place for you to try that out, either locally or, or with our extended presence. Wherever you are, we're coming up with some new and inventive ways to do mission and ministry outside this location, outside this building. So what will that look like for you? and you, and you, and whoever's watching. Worship together teaches us to grow in our relationship with God and with each other, and through the experience of being the community of faith, we learn all the ways that God lives and moves in and through us. And as we grow in faith, as we grow in relationship with God, it becomes easier to let go of our need to, to control things, to control our faith, to control all the things around our faith, it becomes easier to look for the ways that God is moving in and through others and to become part of that movement of love and grace wherever and whenever we can. That's part of Paul's message to his church. He's asking them all to become agents of grace for each other and with each other. And I hope we can be too. So watch for the invitation. It's coming. Amen. We're going to enter our time of prayer as Suzette leads us in a song. The words will be on the screen. But first, spend some time as you listen to the music, as you follow along. We're not singing in the sanctuary yet, but as you follow along with the song, thinking about your prayer requests and what you're bringing to God today. If you're on the live stream, you can certainly put those in the chat, and we'll bring those forward when we come to prayer after the song.
When I'm troubled, Lord, walk with me. As we come into a time of prayer, we remember our uh, prayer program each week. Marie's going to help us with that. Okay. We're praying this week for Mark and Carol Blackwell, Deborah Kramer, Art and Sandra Felton, Amy Clock, George Midwinter, Bev Robbins, Bill, and Kelly Tennant. We also, uh, for friends and families in the congregation, we are praying especially this week for Donald Frederick, for Karen Friga as she has another knee surgery this week, and for Janet Boughton, who took a fall yesterday. There's also prayer requests coming on the live stream. Mm -hmm. Uh, One is from Phyllis Cousins. Her daughter had surgery this week, and she's home recovering and is asking for prayers. Three nurses um, who all work in the same place who are being treated for breast cancer and another whose mom died of COVID this week. And so lots of heavy hearts in that nursing unit as they're trying to provide care for folks. Mm -hmm. We also have, um, let's see. Yeah. Grateful, a prayer of gratitude that even though... um, Everyone in a family got sick. Everyone tested negative for COVID, so it turned out to be just a, a mm-hmm. common virus. So that family is all thanking God. Binghamton University, Maggie Wolford puts out there that Binghamton University has had to move to t- all online for two weeks because mm-hmm. of COVID. This is the recurring theme, and I think it will be for a while. And so I invite us into, I'm not going to come out too far, but I'll come out here. Mm -hmm. To be still and listen for the voice of God. I'll lead us in prayer and then invite you to lift the prayers of your hearts aloud wherever you are. And we'll follow that with the, the refrain, Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. So let us be in prayer together. Let the silence settle your heart. Put the distractions aside.
Holy One, we come to you in a frantic and frenzied world. There is fear among us of a virus we cannot see and cannot cure yet. We pray for the families of over 200,000 people who have lost their lives to it. And we pray that it doesn't walk into our families because we are afraid. And Holy One, we know there's no controlling that. There's no stopping that. And so we ask that you be present with us in all times and in all circumstances. That you remind us that you are powerfully with us. When we fear, when we worry, when we are sick, and when we are well. Holy One, we pray for oh, families who've lost everything in the wake of hurricanes or wildfires. Nature seems to be as tumultuous as this virus this year. So many have suffered. So many keep on suffering. And our hearts ache with empathy and with sorrow for them. Holy One, we live in a, a chaotic political environment right now as well. Political parties staking their, their flags in territories and calling us to their camps and inviting us to engage with, you, with each other in the worst ways possible. And so we pray for sanity, for peace in this process of election and transition. Holy One, we, we are small creatures and frail, and the world sometimes seems bigger than we can handle. With our own worries, with global worries, we feel pressure and heaviness and weight. And so in this time, help us to see the, the beauty of the world, to see the power and potential of your creation, and to offer you thanks. to be grateful. Help us to rejoice in the things we can rejoice in. Help us at least to be able to rejoice that you are present with us. Even if everything else seems awful and upside down and wrong, you are with us. And if we can rejoice in nothing else, we can rejoice in that. Holy One, we have mentioned names already, so many names of persons who need special care and comfort this week. But there are so many more we carry with us, so many we hold in our hearts. And so in this time, wherever we are, we lift these persons and these situations to you as we lift their names and speak them aloud. You hear each name, you know each need, yet we ask it anyway, Lord, in your love, hear our, our prayers. prayers, for we ask each one in the name of Jesus the Christ as we offer to you the prayer he first taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we, we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against, against us. And lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Normally, during worship service, we have a time of offering ourselves and our resources to God's purpose. The pandemic has pushed us to explore new ways of offering our gifts to God, new ways that will likely continue once we can be together again. We are still supporting the work of the church, and your generosity has been epic. Please consider how you will continue your offerings and pledges to the work of the church. If you haven't signed up for online giving, give Maureen in the office a call, and she can set you up. Or go to the website and click on the Give Now button. Or you can use an app called Give Plus. You download it, set up an account, locate who you want to give to, in our case, Central, and then you can give through that app to one of our ca four, ca four categories, the General Fund, Lucas Jackson, the Organ, or Hope at Central, our church within a church, or you can still mail a check. If you're in the sanctuary this morning, you'll see a basket at the rear, and as you depart to worship, you may place your gifts in that basket as you go. Shall we give a blessing? Okay. Eternal God, we present our tithes and offerings to you now as a token of our love for you. We know that our financial giving is not the only thing you require. We remember your mandate to take your gospel to the whole world. We remember that you desire us to love you with all our hearts, our minds, and our souls. We remember that you told us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Help us to measure up in your love and our love and service. Amen. Amen. So we've come to a time of announcements. There are a lot of ways to, make your to take your faith. Wait a minute. How do I say that? <laughs> to put your faith in action. Sorry about that. To put your faith in action this week. Ways to connect with Central and our ministries. Um, ways to be at work in the world. And so... Um, First, a simple thing you can do is to be in prayer. Be in prayer for the work of this church and its ministries. Another pretty simple thing to do, particularly if you're watching the live stream, is to share that link. Comment and share it with everyone you know um, and all, on all your social media um, networks. Watch the website and email for updates and information on things happening this week. If you're not on the email list, you can get on it. It's simple. Go to the website and fill out the form or call the office, and Maureen will help you. If you're on Facebook, remember to follow our page. There's lots of stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. And let me just say, with, with the way things are, <laughs> with the COVID-19 ups and downs, with... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> stay at home or don't stay at home or what are we shutting down now? With all of that going on, your best bet is our weekly email um, to watch your email because it, things will come out in that and we'll do updates during the week if we have to. Um, we plan to stay open as, for in-person worship as, as much and as often as we can, just so you know. And if you are watching somehow remotely, it's plenty safe in here. There are not throngs of people in here. <laughs> Um, so you can certainly come if you're feeling like you want to come worship in person, please do. Um, we are observing precautions all over the place. So some upcoming events this week. Yes, our Monday evening book study gathers on Zoom, Monday evenings at 7.30. We're reading chapter 4 of the Reading the Bible Again for the First Time by Marcus Borg. Zoom. The Zoom link will be on the weekly email. The men's group will be also meeting on Zoom on Friday, October 16th at 7 p.m. All men anywhere are invited to the men's group. As always, we will have a devotion, we will have some laughs, and we'll have some items for discussion. It's a good time to meet with each other, at least virtually, Zoom link will be in the weekly email, and you can, or you can call the office for the information. The number will be on the screen at the end of worship. We have a blood drive coming up Saturday, October 17th, from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central is going to host the Red Cross blood drive in the dining room. There is an urgent need for blood donations, and while we can't serve a hot breakfast, we do offer bagels or pastries. Pre-drive reservations are required, 
by going to the Red Cross website and search for the blood drive at Central. Also, if you want to help with that, because even a continental breakfast takes helpers um, to provide that and get that out for folks, um, if you would like to help with that, please contact Knud Hansen or the church office to get hooked up with helping. It's just for a few hours on Saturday morning with that. Our soul care offerings each week are continuing at 10 on Wednesdays. And that's on Zoom as well, and that's a great uh, time to come together for some devotion and connection and fellowship together. So I hope you'll tune into that. Also at 10 on Sundays via Zoom, we have a fellowship time um, between services, 10 o'clock every Sunday morning. And I hope you were there this morning. And I was there for a little while at the very beginning. And I hope that you will join us next week if you weren't here today. So watch your, watch your emails. There's stuff happening all the time. Mm -hmm. But for now, we have come together to worship God, to grow in our faith, to grow in relationship with God, to be God's people, empowered to, to be God's love in the world. And so as you go into this week and into this world, go and do as the psalmist says, defend the weak and the orphan, uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed, rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. Go. And as you go, go in the presence and the power of the Christ who gives you permission and power to do all these things. Go in his peace. Amen. Amen. Classic.